cast of lunatic peasants. R. Chaotic stupid wannabe sneak thief. A. Whose player doesn't really get RP and so is pretty much just a combat character. O. Former LG paladin now retired and generally out of fucks. P. Assistant to a traveling mage who stopped in town. Campaign opens in a tavern. Specifically, a tavern brawl. R. O. And a find themselves back to back to back and decide fuck it, let's punch some people together. A few rounds and a couple accidental NPC deaths later they're promptly dragged off by the town guard and thrown in the slammer. R swears on every god he knows he'll burn down the tavern. All one of them. Eventually manage to talk their way into being released as long as they're supervised and work to pay off their bounties. Totaling a 10 grand. Suddenly, enter P. His master is always on the lookout for slave labor eager volunteers and has offered to pay off their bounties in exchange for help with a simple task. Sussaf but no choice so they agree. Taken to P's master, who explains he has a bunch of weapons with crazy enchantments, and that the enchantment on the weapons can be randomized at will. He doesn't know how many effects are possible on each weapon, and he'll pay them for each effect they find. P will go with them to supervise and help with any magic whatever. Party all agrees it's a better deal than they probably deserved. Well, except R who's already snuck away from the party and gone to burn down the tavern. R arrives at the scene of the crime. I sneak up to the tavern. Roll. Fail miserably. Tavern owner spots him and immediately calls the guards. R panics. I try to assemble and light some kindling before the guards get here. Rolls dex. Fails miserably. Out of character entire party is laughing at quite possibly the world's worst rogue. Guard arrives. Goes to grab R. Ah not into that, rolls to run away. Fails miserably. Now firmly in guard's grasp, GM gives this idiot one last roll to try to escape the guard's grip. Rolls. Nat 1, GM sighs. You accidentally writhe deeper into the guard's grasp and choke yourself unconscious. Back at the cop shop, the rest of the party is just beginning to wonder where I has gotten to when a guard walks past dragging their co-teammate. Have to awkwardly explain that this bumbling wannabe arsonist is, in fact, meant to be working off his fines and is one of them. Guard shrugs. Bounty total. 12,500. P begs his master not to send him on any situations where his life may be in R's hands while the rest of the party checks the nearby bounty board. A few bandits are being annoying in the woods nearby and have earned a measly bounty. But a bounty nonetheless. Quest get. After even more uneventful fucking around the group finally arrives at the bandit camp. Bandits waste no time getting ready to waste these random ass villagers and one sort of intimidating wizard. Initiative rolls all around, boys. P up first takes aim at a bandit with a pistol, and gets ready to fire the literal actual first shot of the entire campaign. Shoots. The first random effect rolled by anyone in the entire campaign. D20,000 random effect. Using both V2 and V3 of the net Librum table. Nearest paladin appears naked in the queen's bedchamber. O instantly vanishes, all his gear clattering to the ground. Finds himself standing in an unfamiliar though luxurious room, holding nothing but his sword, with his dagger swaying in the breeze. O's player slowly looks up at P across the table. I swear to Peller I'm going to kill you. GM checks map castle is several days journey away by a horse and wagon that absolutely none of these broke idiots can afford. GM quietly shuffles his papers and begins preparing to run two campaigns at once for the next little while. Meanwhile, back in the main group's adventure. Combat has been going swell. R shoots a bandit, whose arms then turn to rubber and flop amusingly as he falls over dead. A shoots a bandit, and is also now unable to read when exposed to sunlight. Unbeknownst to him, O is still naked, and also still in the queen's bedchamber. One bandit is now incredibly terrified and believes P has magic to weigh the dead bandit's bones. Runs screaming into the woods. Other bandits mostly just flail ineffectually. R shoots another bandit dead, and can now set wood on fire with his tongue. P kills the last bandit, and is now blind when not at full health. O makes a triumphant return to kill the last one. Just kidding he's still engaging in long distance involuntary exhibitionism. All the bandits are dead and also there's porridge everywhere due to a few missed shots. The gang heads home to hand in the bounty. 
GM tells R to roll Dex. Fails. Of course he fucking does. Trips on a tree root and eats shit against the tree trunk. Tongue happens to hit the tree and it bursts into flames. R I can out a chalk to gains an absolutely terrifying, shit eating grin. Sprints into town, leaving his party behind. Just ask Ikaku.gif. Meanwhile, Ino's adventure. Looks out window. Passes check due to military history. Realizes he's in Guildedville. Realizes with considerably more panic that he's in the palace. Realizes he's naked in the palace. Peeks out into the hallway no guards in sight. Looks down no pants either. Priorities evaluating. Evaluating. Evaluated. Looks through the dresses for clothes. Realizes very quickly this is the queen's room. Fuck it dot embroidery. GM describes in excessive detail the fine material and gorgeous pattern of the dress as a ah and P piss themselves and O cracks his knuckles under the table. O heads into the hallway. I leave the palace. GM are you sure the king has a bedroom too? O looks like he can't decide if he wants to laugh or scream at P again. Rest of party is out of character trying to get him to try to assassinate the king. I leave the fucking palace. Walks past garden nobles who are all too baffled at the sight of an angry, grizzled veteran in a floral sundress dragging a claymore behind him to really do any of the things they probably should. Eventually makes it through the palace. Immediately heads for a blacksmith. How much will you give me for this dress? Blacksmith looks him up and down. Less than I'll give you to keep it on. Eventually trade the dress for a tunic and some scrap armor since the guy needs a gift for his wife. Wanders out and begs at a nearby temple. Looks the part so people give him some change out of pity. 100 silver. Tell him the ride back to the rest of the party would be 150. Oh look. Notes GM. A bounty board. Oh looks. Sees some relatively simple quests in town that'll give him enough money to go back. No. Fuck em. I'm going on my own adventure. What else is on the board? GM sighs again. Quickly draws an X on his map and writes cult. Our oh, pretty hefty bounty for anyone who can find information about this local cult that's been corrupting paladins of your god. Opal's bounty down from bounty board. Quest get. Meanwhile, back in main group's adventure. P's last shot fire caused him to be blind whenever he's not at full health. GM tells P he feels incredibly fragile, as though some terrible fate would befall him from even the slightest wound. P then loudly announces this Ike and asks it to punch him. GM fasapums. P, you lose 5 HP. Also you're blind. An hour or so later, a finally finishes guiding the now blind wizard's apprentice through the woods. Still no sign of R. Aside from out of character dice rolling. Somehow, now this idiot passes every stealth roll. P and a make a beeline for the bounty board. Gotta get that sweet sweet silver. P goes to read bounty board. Ah yes, I am blind. Never fear, I was here. A steps up to the plate bounty board. Sun is still up. A stares at the bounty board as the letters kind of swim about hazily. A realizes he can no longer read. And on that blessed day, we were all illiterate. Neither an OP can read the bounty or the bounty board. Have no idea who to hand in this contract or how to pick another one. Suddenly, alarm bells ring across the town. The entire inn has been engulfed in flames. People are panicking and running screaming. If only the guards had a suspect with a history of arson. Oh wait. The entire town guard is now in full on manhunt mode for the arsonist. A stares at the inn in horror. P has no idea what's happening because he is blind. Suddenly, they hear R's voice from the bushes behind them. Hey guys, guess what I did? Our cast of idiot peasants. Plus one. Rai, chaotic stupid pyromaniac rogue, who can't now light wood on fire with his tongue. J, combat focused and RP light fighter who can't read in direct sunlight. Owen, retired paladin who, after going on an involuntary nudist retreat, said fuck everything and went on his own adventure, hunting down a cult. Pete, apprentice to a traveling mage who is accompanying the rest of the gang, and is also blind when not at full HP. And finally, the newest addition to the party, Greg. Farmer who always dreamed of being an adventurer and practiced sword fighting in his spare time. As a reminder of the mechanics, they each have enchanted weapons that do one of the 20,000 random effects each time they're used, and can re-roll the effect or maintain it at will. 
When we left off, Rai had just passed an incredible amount of rolls to sneak into town, burn down the tavern, and sneak away, hiding in a bush next to the party tries to speak to them without giving away his position since the entire town is hunting for him. Crit fails. There's a Rai I know. Screams out loud that he burned down the tavern, giving away his position to the two nearby villagers. Immediately go to call the guards. Rai, I roll to persuade them it wasn't me. GM, okay. What do you say? Rai stammers through a couple miserable excuses as the guards close in. Finally. His eyes light up and he proclaims I tell them it was a dragon. Entire party stares at him like he's lost his mind. Which he has, of course. Long, long ago. Rai, they're just stupid villagers have they ever seen a dragon? GM, fuck. Roll it. Crushes his roll. Fucking really. Villagers are now absolutely convinced it was a shape-shifting dragon. The fact that Rai used his tongue to start the fire has only reinforced their belief. It was breathing fire. Party is dying. GM is dying inside. Gives up on last hope of campaign not being incredibly stupid. Guard arrives to arrest Rai, only for him to be defended by a gang of villagers. Insist on the town guard posting a bounty on the dragon. Guard decides whatever this is, it isn't worth his pay. Then, enter Greg. Notices party members struggling to read bounty board. This is my chance. Offers to read it for them, if he can come with them to fulfill the bounty. Rai has already fucked off again, so no choice. Welcome aboard, idiot peasant number 5. The party sees nothing interesting, decides to rest up and check again tomorrow. Spend the rest of the day gathering supplies and actually preparing for an adventure this time. The next morning, GM describes an obviously unofficial bounty posting for the dragon. Featuring a handmade drawing of a dragon that was clearly done by someone who had never, ever seen a dragon. Rai, still gloating, slams his hand on the table and demands the GM draw it. GM, I'm not going to. Rai, draw it. Table chance. GM sighs. An obviously handmade drawing done by someone who'd never seen a dragon. Party also sees an actual official bounty seeking the unknown arsonist. Immediately takes the bounty. Quest get. Also sees another bounty to investigate the local logging camp, which received a shipment from a new supplier and went silent. Important to local economy. Priority mission. Quest get. Meanwhile, in Owen's adventure. Taken bounty to investigate local cult which is corrupting paladins of Owen's god. Trekking through the woods. GM tells Owen he feels a foul, slithering presence at the back of his mind. Cold, probing and malevolent. Owen. Okay. GM. Um. Dart do you. Resist. Owen. Nope. Okie dokie Dr. Jones. Ancient eldritch god reaches into Owen's mind, steers him toward cult. Comes out into clearing of woods near small lake, large stones standing next to it. As Owen closes in, he sees runes appear on its surface, feels the dead god whisper sweet nothings into his ear. You want revenge? Don't you power respect we can give, we can give, just let us in, just give in to us. Ya yeah, no, spooky shit. Owen decides to consider it. Owen done considering it. Owen probably didn't really consider it. Renounces his god, embraces the void. Get fucked, Pella. A secret door opens in the standing stone as the cultists welcome their newest brother. Meanwhile, in the main party's adventure, party encounter some bandits. Definitely because they rolled it, and certainly not because the DM didn't prepare and needs time to improv a side quest. No rolls that are too exciting, save for one. Greg will now be compelled to consume the next poison he encounters. DM laughs, quietly writes spiders on his sheet. Finally, party arrives at logging camp, completely deserted. Campfire in the center of the camp, still has a few embers. Oh 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 oh, pretty fire. Rai immediately goes to poke the embers. Barracks sleeping quarters to the left. Foreman's office to the right. Bounty wants them to find out what happened. Stipulates a bonus for any extra info they can find. Jay and Greg go to Foreman's office. Pete goes to check out barracks. Just as DM hoped. Kem. Bison yes Jeff. Greg and Jay into Foreman's quarters. 
Find record of them receiving some logs from a mysterious new buyer. Strange folks. Wore lots of cloaks. But this wood is incredible. I wonder what kind it was it made the strangest white. Sticky fruits. Greg continues leafing through and pocketing invoices. Which Jay looks around more. Finds a bunch of bottles on the table next to the desk. Detective mode engage. Looks like whatever beer bottles and jars the loggers could find. Filled with a viscous green liquid. Jay does just about everything short of taste it. DM tries to hide his disappointment. Jay. Oh. I see it's some kind of poison. Gets halfway through the word poison before Greg shoves him to the ground. Pops the corks. And starts chugging them like he's never chugged before. The empty bottles haven't even hit the ground before he's started on another one. World. Getting. Fuzzy. Poison. So. Good. Meanwhile. Rai's investigation has concluded that fire is neat. Continues poking the fire. Pete opens the door into the barracks. DM asks him to roll perception. Passes. DM evil smile. DM. You successfully see through the illusion. Party is shitting bricks. Room is dead silent. Spiders. Fucking spiders. Fucking giant spiders. Fucking giant psychic spiders. Fucking giant psychic spiders that have been mind controlling the party to not notice them until they are all about to strike. The entire camp is covered in spider web. Loggers are bound up and cocoon. The lucky ones are already dead. The unlucky ones are having their corpses piloted Dark Souls style. Being used to distill the spider's venom into paralytic poison and apply it to weapons to catch more people. Dozens of spiders in the barracks. Rai has been poking a spider for the last 10 minutes. Two spiders on the outside of the foreman's quarters, looking through the window at Greg. If it's possible for a spider to look baffled, they do. But hey, if a meal decides to waltz right in and poison itself they aren't going to question. Pete's horrified screech is enough to break the illusion for the rest of the party. Three more screams fill the air. Pillar can't help you now, Mithurthicus. Pete runs out of the barracks. Chased by spiders. So many spiders. Jay runs to help. Gets tackled by the spider above the door. Greg looks in horror as he cracks open his fifth bottle of poison. Or was it sixth? Whoa. Were my hands always. Hands. Guys I think I can feel my heart stopping. Rai shoots at the spider in front of him. Fire put bursts back into flame. Cooking the spider instantly. Fuck yeah. Fire. Rai runs to save Jay. Pete just runs anywhere that isn't spiders. Pete is a very slow mage. Ain't no gyms in wizard school. Carrying more than just scrolls. If you know what I mean. Spiders are gaining on him. And not slowly. Greg does some mental math and decides Pete will definitely be fine for 12 more bottles. Just has to drink faster. Rye helps Jay but the spiders reach Pete. Takes some damage. Pete is now blind. Running towards what he hopes is the party. Statistically speaking though, probably just more spiders. Have I mentioned there's a lot of spiders? Jay and Ryan barely holding on themselves, never mind saving Pete. Greg knows he has to act, but... Poison. But friends. But poison. Pork no lows dos. Tucks as many bottles as he can carry under his arm. Sprints into battle. Sword in one arm. Poison under the other. Chugging like the little engine that could could die at any moment, that's his. Barely passing fortitude roll after fortitude roll, he runs to save Pete, who has gotten completely turned around and run back into the spiders. He slashes at a nearby spider, it vanishes and reappears in a web a few meters away. Desperate times call for stupid, poison fueled measures. This is going to hurt me more than it hurts you buddy. Well, probably not actually. Slashes Pete across the chest. Pete vanishes, reappears in his master's wagon, d20,000 random effect, target appears where they woke up that morning, Jay and Rai barely holding off the flood of spiders. Rai wings one with a shot from his pistol. Spider collapses into d10,000 spider cubes. Jay cuts the leg of another, and it sinks ankle deep into the ground. Do spiders have ankles? Greg knows he must rescue them. Wait, why are there four of them? Oh look. The ground collapses, moments away from death, crawls over and nicks Rai across the ankles. Rai spend the night in the inn, 
the inn that he burnt down, appears two stories in the air and falls into a pile of charcoal. Five seconds later, Jay appears and lands on top of him. Guards all them out and charge them with disturbing the peace. Greg is lying against a tree stump, dozens of spiders on all sides. Clicking their mandibles in anticipation of an easy meal. Greg passes one last fort save. Tosses back his last bottle of poison with one hand. Stabs himself in the stomach with the other. If only he had a third hand to flip off the spiders with. Wakes up on his farm. Staggers into the street. Throws up blood. And passes out. Thankfully, Pete warned his master what was going on after he was patched up. Managed to find Greg before he's killed by the poison. Or the stab wound. Or any of the other things that should have killed him. Finally, everyone's all recovered. Waiting for Greg to wake up. Finally, he does. Party says that was insane, they nearly died, and they'd totally understand if Greg didn't want to adventure with them anymore. Not like he has a giant bounty to pay off, anyway. Greg nods sagely, looks around the room, takes a deep breath, Greg, that was fucking awesome, teammate get. Meanwhile, in Owen's adventure, just before the spiders blinded Pete, he fired a shot at one of them, when the M rolled the effect. He literally fell laughing out of his chair. Had to leave the room and go take a breather. Told Party not to worry. Party obviously was extremely worried. DM finally reveals what the effect was. Nearest cult is dedicated entirely to killing the caster. Nearest cult. Cult Owen was indoctrinated into after swearing revenge on Pete. As Owen is chilling in cult base, cult leader approaches him. My brother, our lord has given us a new directive. There is one in this world who must be consumed by our god before the rest. It is one you knew, in your past life. Lovecraft Nightmare God offers his powers to Owen as his avatar. Your mission, should he choose to accept it. Kill Pete. DM had talked to Owen before about what he wanted to do. Owen is absolutely on board with becoming the big bad evil guy. Owen is flooded with ancient, dark energy from a long dead god becomes the avatar of he who shall consume all, the void, the sinister expanse, the seeping filth, has an entire secret cult at his disposal, as well as a host of incredible powers, including but not limited to, dominating two NPCs per day, creating an illusion of any scale or complexity one per day, teleporting back to a preset location once per day, the ability to mute all magic and remove the effects on his former party members weapons. The ability to recast any spell that he's been hit by. The ability to cast a wild surge at will, because why not? And more, if you order now. Just one easy payment of your soul. Owen has basically become the ultimate hit and run long con big bad evil guy. Functionally unkillable unless the party traces him back to his base of operations. Able to slowly take over towns corrupt the nobility, set devious traps. All with the sole goal of killing Pete. Meanwhile, back in Onane, more like none in now though. Jay asks Pete's master if he has anything to help him read. Pete's master gives him a pair of glasses. Rai is trying to kill Pete for not giving his share of the bounty to pay off the gang's fines. Since, you know, he's not a criminal. Greg is wandering around town, telling everybody he's an adventurer. Dragon is still on the loose. Dragon, so blissfully unaware. Not for long though, current fines left to pay, $9,875. So yeah, this story is uh, somewhat of a copy of the Commoner's Curse, I'll link to it down below. If you're interested in the spell chart, I'll also link to that, it's so much fun, I am busting to try this campaign out. I've been wanting to do something like this for a very long time and I'm going to be doing it after I'm finished the current campaign that I'm playing. I can't fucking wait. It's a lot of fun and it's the type of thing it's always going to be different just because of the nature of the Gantam spell charge and there's so much could be done with it. I think it could be so much fun and if you've tried this out yourself definitely let us know down below because I think it's really cool. Anyway look and um, there's going to be new parts of this coming up in the not so distant future so definitely remember to subscribe, notification, all that other good shit. You know what I'm on about and like I'll see you in the near future right?